Mr. Donovan decided that he wanted to take the Count's place in Miss Conway's heart. He did not seem to think he could fail. He would be friendly. He would keep smiling. When they returned to the house, she ran to her room and brought down the picture of the Count. Mr. Donovan looked at it. No one could have guessed what he was thinking. He gave me this on the night he left for Italy, said Miss Conway. A fine-looking man, said Mr. Donovan warmly. Miss Conway, will you go to Coney Island with me next Sunday afternoon? A month later, they told the other guests in the house on Second Avenue that they were going to be married. Miss Conway continued to wear black. A week later, the two sat on the same seat in the park. Donovan had had a sad face all day. He was so quiet tonight that Miss Conway had to ask him why. What's wrong tonight, Andy? Nothing, Maggie. You never were like this before. What is it? It's nothing much, Maggie. Yes, it is. And I want to know. Is it some other girl? Why don't you go to her if you want her? Take your arm away. I will tell you then, said Andy wisely. But you will not understand. Have you heard about Mike Sullivan? Everyone calls him Big Mike Sullivan. I've never heard about him, said Maggie. Who is he? He is the most important man in New York. He is a mile high and as broad as the East River. If you say anything bad about Big Mike, a million men will be ready to fight you. Big Mike is a friend of mine. I am only a little man, but Mike is as good a friend to a little man as he is to a big man. I met him today by chance, and what do you think he did? He came up to me to shake my hand. I told him I was going to be married in two weeks. Andy, says he, I will come to the wedding. That is what he said to me. And he always does what he says. You don't understand it, Maggie. But, but I want to have Big Mike Sullivan at our wedding. It would make me very proud. Then why don't you ask him to come? said Maggie. There's a reason why I can't, said Andy sadly. Don't ask me to reason, for I can't tell you. But can't you smile at me, said Maggie. Maggie, said Andy after a few minutes, do you love me as much as you loved Count Mazzini? He waited a long time, but Maggie did not reply. And then, suddenly, she put her head against his shoulder and began to cry. She held his arm, and her tears wet the black dress. Maggie, Maggie, said Andy, forgetting his own trouble. Tell me about it. Andy, said Maggie, what I told you was not true. And there never was any count. There never was a man in love with me. All the other girls had men in love with them. And, Andy, I look good in black. You know I do. So I went to a shop where I could buy that picture. And that story about the Count, none of it was true. I said he had died because I wanted to wear black. And no one can love me because I didn't tell the truth. I never liked anyone but you. And that's all. But Andy did not move away. Instead, his arm pulled her nearer to him. She looked up and saw that he was smiling. Do you, do you still love me, Andy? Sure, said Andy. You have made everything fine, Maggie. I hoped you would do it before the wedding day. Good girl. Andy, said Maggie after a little time, did you believe all that story about the Count? No, not very much, said Andy, because that is Big Mike Sullivan's picture that you're wearing on the chain around your neck.